Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and blessed be his kingdom now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, whose Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, is the light of the world, grant that your people, illumined by your word and sacraments, may shine with the radiance of Christ's glory, that he be, may be known and worshipped and obeyed to the ends of the earth. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the book of Isaiah. For Zion's sake, I will not keep silent, and for Jerusalem's sake, I will not rest, until her vindication shines out like the dawn, and her salvation like a burning torch. The nations shall see your vindication, and all the kings your glory, and you shall be called by a new name that the mouth of the Lord will give. You shall be a crown of beauty in the hand of the Lord, and a royal diadem in the hand of your God. You shall no more be termed forsaken, and your land shall no more be termed desolate. But you shall be called, My delight is in her, and your land married. For the Lord delights in you, and your land shall be married. For as a young man marries a young woman, so shall your builder marry you. And as the bridegroom rejoices over the bride, so shall your God rejoice over you. The Word of the Lord. Psalm 36. Your love, O Lord, reaches to the heavens and your faithfulness to the clouds. Your righteousness is like the strong mountains, your justice like the great deep. You save both man and beast, O Lord. How priceless is your love, O God! Your peoples take refuge under the shadow of your wings. They feast upon the abundance of your house. You give them drink from the river of your delights. For with you is the well of life, and in your light we see light. Continue your loving kindness to those who know you, and your favor to those who are true of heart. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. 
Glory to you, Lord Christ. On the third day, there was a wedding in Cana of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. Jesus and his disciples had also been invited to the wedding. When the wine gave out, the mother of Jesus said to him, They have no wine. And Jesus said to her, Woman, what concern is that to you and to me? My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, Do whatever he tells you. Now standing there, there were six stone water jars for the Jewish rites of purification, each holding twenty or thirty gallons. And Jesus said to them, Fill the jars with water. And they filled them to the brim. He said to them, Now draw some out and take it to the chief steward. So they took it. When the steward tasted the water that had become wine and did not know where it had come from, though the servants who had drawn the water knew, the steward called the bridegroom and said to him, Everyone serves the good wine first, and then the inferior wine after the guests have become drunk, but you have kept the good wine until now. Jesus did this, the first of his signs in Cana of Galilee, and revealed his glory and his disciples believed in him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of the one true and living God, amen. Fifteen years ago, Stephanie Nolan walked into the public hospital in Chongwe, Zambia, and was overwhelmed by what she saw. Gaunt men and women lying head to toe to head, three to each narrow bed, looking starved and wasted from AIDS. Doctors and nurses with scant resources trying futilely to help, while stepping over even more patients who were sleeping on mats on the floor. In a visit to that same hospital this past November, even in the midst of COVID, Nolan was equally startled to find most of the beds empty. The curtains that partitioned bed from bed were tied up neatly out of the way, and nurses quietly updated their notes. When she asked the doctor, where is everyone? She noticed her voice echoed off the walls. The doctor looked at her and asked, how long has it been? When she said 15 years, he laughed. He laughed, but he understood. They're at home, Stephanie. Out of 200,000 in this health district, 20,000 are on antiretroviral treatment. 20,000 out of 200, it's a staggering number. But when she located the nurses and activists she had known so well in the years before, many were still alive and growing older, attending college graduations and weddings of their children. It's possible to come out on the other side, Nolan wrote this week in the New York Times, into a future we can barely envision right now. A vision. A dream. During the 1950s and 60s, civil rights activists campaigned for change. Children showing up for their first day of school at integrated facilities were pushed back by National Guard. Boycotts of bus systems that forced people of color into the back of the bus upended daily life in segregated towns. Peaceful protesters were met by police dogs and firebombs and beatings. And yet in 1963, hundreds of thousands of people, including busloads from Episcopal churches, arrived in Washington, D.C. to march together for jobs and freedom. And at that march, they heard a speech by Martin Luther King Jr., a Baptist minister from Atlanta who had been preaching for years about his dream. The American dream, the dream of God, that one day all people would live together in love and in peace. That speech crystallized for many just what they were longing for. Not revolution, as some activists wanted, but a future so beautifully different from their everyday experience. 
and putting that dream into words made it possible. Christ was born into difficult times as well. The manger wasn't a cozy and safe space for a new baby. It was a cold stable where his parents landed after trudging a hundred miles, pregnant, on foot, during the rainy season, so they could be taxed 50 to 60% of their meager income. They were essentially living under military dictatorship, so it may seem incongruous that this Messiah, for whom the people had been waiting, would execute his first miracle at a wedding feast, turning water into wine so that the celebration could continue. Were there not more important miracles that Jesus could have performed than to turn water into wine? at a wedding celebration. And yet this is precisely what we do every week. We celebrate. That word is not an accident. Celebrate means nothing different than when you gather with family or friends to cut into a cake thick with icing, to celebrate another year, a graduation, a new birth. Celebrate means to honor, to remember, to keep, to enjoy to live. Was it frivolous to turn water into wine? Is it appropriate for us to celebrate when people are hungry and sick and wandering the earth with nowhere to lay their heads? The truth is, in the midst of pandemic, in the face of cancer, in moments of new birth, the reason is always there. That Christ came to earth, walked with us, sacrificed for us so that we might never be separate from God, that is what we celebrate. We eat and drink not to forget, but to remember. To remember that nothing, in to remember that our life is so intricately woven into and within the divine that nothing can pry us loose. Some theologians have said that because of this, Christians should never cease to celebrate, that people on the outside should look in and want to join us, not because of subtle mystery or peace, but because we look like we are having so much fun. And we do, don't we? In fact, it's often this lack of being able to sit around a table, sharing warm soup or light as cakes, sharing a bottle of wine, debating scripture, singing hymns. That's what we miss so acutely in the midst of this pandemic. But still, we celebrate. We might say that at that moment in the wedding, Jesus didn't yet fully realize that his time to act had come, but his mother did. She knew that sorrow and difficulty were never far. She also knew that great things were happening, miraculous things. From the moment the angel visited her, reached out to her and told her that the Holy Spirit would give her a child God reached deep into the world and forged a tie never to be broken. That was worthy of celebration. We gather to share food and wine. We gather also to dream. Our celebration is fodder for the wild reality of dreams that change the course of human history. Dreams that prod us into action. Dreams that give us hope. Dreams that fuel our anger or vulnerability into action. And that's the other side of this passage. Is it at all odd to you that Mary plays that traditional role of Jewish mother to her son, our God? When he tells her, my hour has not yet come, Mary ignores him 
She's undeterred. She says to the steward, do whatever he asks of you. I think not. Not odd. Maybe it takes the gutsiness of a mother to show us. But our relationship with God is exactly that. A relationship. Prodding God, pleading with God, demanding of God isn't out of the ordinary in a relationship. Just as we rely on one another to see things others might ignore, just as God relies on human resilience and ingenuity, things that gave Nolan hope when she revisited that public hospital in Zambia. We are certainly entitled to prod and even quarrel with those with whom we are in relationship. And the relationship we enjoy with God is not unlike Christ's with his mother. The love between them is unconditional. And while God is God and we are human, the actions each of us take matter immensely when it comes to the direction the world is headed. From hospitals full to empty, from children apart to together, from God at a remove from the world to born of it. There is still so much to dream, still so many things to change, and yet everything to celebrate. Amen. The Prayers of the People Let us pray to God, who is made manifest in Jesus Christ. As the prophet Isaiah rang out, Arise, shine, for your light has come. Empower your church, O God, to ring out the good news of the light of your Son, Jesus, which pierces even the deepest darkness. We pray especially for Michael, our presiding bishop, Brian, our diocesan bishop, and the clergy, staff, and lay volunteers of our cathedral parish. As John the Baptist baptized Jesus in the River Jordan, we pray that you would guide our country and our leaders to the ways of justice and righteousness. We pray especially for the President of the United States, the Governor of Idaho, the Mayor of Boise, and all those in authority. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Like the Magi who traveled from afar to bring gifts and celebrate the Savior's birth, we pray for this community that all our citizens may work for the common good. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As Jesus climbed the mountaintop and proclaimed blessings on the people of the world, we pray for the sick and the distressed, the poor and the homeless, those suffering from the coronavirus and their caregivers, especially for those in our cathedral family who suffer from any grief or trouble. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As Jesus called his disciples to leave their nets and boats and follow him, we pray for all the children of God that our love for one another in Christ may be strengthened by God's grace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Finally, let us pray for our own needs and for the needs of others. We pray especially for all those in our cathedral family who have died and for the families in their loss. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord Jesus, light of the world, hear our prayers and make us reflections of your light so that all the places of darkness in our world would be pierced by your light and drawn to you with joy. Amen. And now let us affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, 
eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made. Of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven by the power of the Holy Spirit. He became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And now let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you, and also with you. And now let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you, and also with you. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, because in the mystery of the word made flesh, you have caused a new light to shine in our hearts, to give the knowledge of your glory in the face of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you have made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, 
You and your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. These are the gifts of God for you, the people of God. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. the blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food and the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Life is short and we have little time to gladden the hearts of those who travel the way with us. So be swift to love and make haste to be kind. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you now and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.